Hey everyone, in this video we will finally code up the source panel method using all the information and derivations we've gone through in my previous videos. The MATLAB and Python code will be available on both my website and GitHub with links in the video description. Uh, note that there are two functions that you also need to download and put in the same folder or directory as the main program file. And just as a note, I may use the acronym SPM for source panel method in this video at some points. I'll be making two videos about the source panel method coding. The first one is only for the flow around a circle or a cylinder. The second video will be about flow around an airfoil with comparison to exfoil results. The reason we're starting with a circle or infinite cylinder is because we have an analytical solution to which we can compare the pressure coefficient results. And this is also the default comparison case that is used in the book Fundamentals of Aerodynamics by John Anderson. This analytical solution is given in section 3.13 of the fifth edition of that book in a section called Non-Lifting Flow Over a Circular Cylinder, where a uniform flow and a doublet flow are superimposed to create flow over a cylinder. And the resulting pressure coefficient as a function of angle from the positive x-axis is given by the relationship shown on screen. This is what I will be comparing my SPM code to. A fair part of this code you should have already seen if you watched my panel method geometry video. I'll be going through that part pretty quickly, so if you want to see the details, please watch my other video. Incorporating the information from the last few videos into the code is actually quite simple and only takes a few lines of code, so let's jump into it. So at the top of the code, there's some information you might find useful, including the functions needed and some references and links to my corresponding videos. So the functions needed are these two, and I'll show those in a second, and then some references here, uh, are given with the links to my YouTube videos and you can see these references down here like for panel method geometry it references my panel method geometry video and you can click on this link to go see that derivation. So here is the code all collapsed by code blocks to show you an overview of how the code is structured. We start with the knowns then we create the circle boundary points or the geometry. We can check the panel directions and flip if necessary and then compute the geometry variable. So up to here all of these uh, sections are from my panel method geometry video and you can see the code I've actually published before. This is the new thing right here, the uh, computation of the source panel strengths. And once we, we compute the panel strengths, we can then compute the tangential velocities and thus the pressure coefficients at the control points of the panels. We can then compute the lift and the drag, uh, which in this case are going to be zero because this is the source panel method. So it doesn't really matter, but I'll have these sections in my future vortex panel method videos. Uh, then we can compute uh, the streamlines. And then finally, we can plot some figures. So first we'll take a look at the known section, and you can see there's only a few of them. The first one is the free stream velocity. You can always just keep this at one since it's non-dimensional. The angle of attack is shown here in degrees. This is zero for right now, but we'll change it later. And this is the number of boundary points, so that's one more than the number of panels or control points. And then this offset angle is just used to orient the panels just a, a little bit nicer. Uh, you can also set this to zero and it doesn't really matter. Then down here the uh, plotting flags, if these are set to one it will plot the corresponding plot shown over here and if you set these to zero it won't. So this is just if you're trying to only look at the results for one of the plots you can set the other ones to zero to take up less time when plotting. This next section just creates the uh, x and y boundary points, uh, computes the number of panels, which is just one less than the number of boundary points. And then in this section, we're checking the panel directions and flipping them if they are uh, counterclockwise and don't flip them if they are clockwise. This next section has the first real calculations for the panel method geometry. And so uh, for each panel, we're computing the control points, the x and y control points, uh, the panel length, and then the panel orientation angle. And then down here, we have the other two angles, the delta angle and the beta angle. And then we're just converting from degrees to radians. So now we're in the new section, and the first thing that we can do is compute the i and j geometric integrals since we just solved for the geometric variables in the previous section. So that's what this is. It's calling the compute ij spm function, and it needs as inputs the control points, the boundary points, the uh, panel orientation angle, and the panel length s. And so we can jump into the function right here. So now we're in the compute ij spm function where we have the outputs here, the i and j matrices. Uh, there's a couple references here for the derivations if you're interested. And then down here we have a nested for loop where we loop over all the i and j panels. And then if the jth panel does not equal the ith panel, so if we're not evaluating on the same panel that we're calculating on, then we compute the intermediate values. So these are from my videos, A, B, the normal C and D, the tangential C and D, and then the E value. 
And then down here, we just compute the integral term. So this is the first integral term, this is the second integral term, and then we just add those two together to compute the i. Note that we're using the normal cn and dn. And then down here, we're doing the same thing for j. It's the same exact equations, but we've just substituted in ct and dt, and again, adding term one and term two for j. And then if there happen to be any NANDs in either of the matrices, we just zero those out so that we don't get any errors uh, when we bring these back into the main script. So what we've brought back in to the main script are the i and j matrices. And so next we need to populate the A matrix from my uh, solving the system of equations video. And so what we're doing here is just looping through all the i and j panels. Uh, the i uh, matrix that we computed was only solved for when i was not equal to j. So we have this if else statement in here where it says if i is equal to j, we know that that's going to be pi. That's the on diagonal. Else, so that's when i does not equal j, we're just going to put in the value that we got from the i matrix. So that populates the a matrix. Also note up here that there's a simpler option. Uh, if you'd like, you can take this and just and just take this. Oops, and then we'll put it in here and then we can comment this out and it'll work just the same. It's just this is easier to read if you're trying to figure out how to uh, transfer my derivations into code. Next we're going to go down to populating the B array. So this is the right hand side of the system of equations. And this is just equal to uh, negative V infinity times 2 pi times cosine of beta i. And it's as simple as that. Again, there's a simpler option here that you can also just comment in if you want and comment this out. And then the last thing we want to do is compute the source panel strengths, as I had mentioned in that video, by solving the system of equations. So we're just going to do A slash B, and that'll give us our source panel strengths, lambda. For a closed geometry, the sum of the source panel strengths should be equal to zero, so that's what we're checking here. And since the lambda is actually a source panel strength per unit distance, um, we multiply by the panel length because this lambda is constant over each panel. So we're just summing all of the lambda times the panel length and then seeing what that sum is equal to and it should be equal to zero and that's just a sanity check. This next section is where we take those uh, source panel strengths and then we can compute the panel velocities at the control point of the panel and that's this, just the tangential velocity which I call VT and so this section here is computing VT sorry VT and then computing the pressure coefficient using vt and v infinity. Uh, a simpler method, again, you can use this up here for both vt and cp and just comment those in and comment this out. Uh, but this is essentially uh, solving for a summation. So this is what this is doing. This is kind of a summation um, and that we add into then the uniform flow. So this is the uniform flow term for the tangential velocity. And then this is the summation that uses the source panel strengths. Then also in this section, I calculate the uh, analytic theta value. So that's just me doing an array of theta values, and then plugging that into the analytic CP equation that I showed earlier. In this section, we are computing the lift and the drag coefficients. So first, we compute the normal and axial force coefficients, and then we can uh, compute the lift and the drag coefficients by decomposing the normal and axial coefficients based off of their uh, angle with respect to the lift and drag axes based off of the angle of attack. Then down here, we plot the or uh, display the lift coefficient and drag coefficient down the command window. For the source panel method, these should both be equal to zero. So again, it's another sanity check. Um, and in the vortex panel methods, the lift coefficient will equal something. The drag coefficient is still meaningless in the vortex panel method uh, that I code up. So this is just included for completeness sake. And this last section here is computing the streamlines. This used to say compute and display streamlines, but we're displaying in the plotting section. So I just deleted that. So the first thing are the grid parameters. So the X and the Y grid points. Uh, this is using a 100 by 100. Just note that if you increase these values, you'll get better resolved streamlines and contour plots, but it also takes longer to solve. Uh, these you can read the comments for, but this is just setting up the uh, streamline parameters and the uh, generating the grid points. And really what we're solving for, for the streamlines, what we need to compute streamlines are the X and the Y velocities. So that's what this is doing. We're going through for uh, all of the X grid points and then all of the Y grid points. We're doing a nested for loop here. I'm just saying, what is the x point, what's the y point? And then we're solving for the uh, geometric integrals for both the x and the y uh, velocities using the streamline SPM function, where instead of taking the uh, airfoil control points, which was xc and yc, we are now just taking the single uh, xp, yp that we're trying to solve for the velocities at. We're also taking the boundary points for the airfoil, the 
uh, panel angle and the panel length. Now we're in my streamline SPM function, which looks very similar to the uh, compute IJ SPM function. The only thing is that now we're returning MX and MY. This is using the same nomenclature that I used in my derivation video, which you can see linked here if you want to watch the derivation. And then down here, again, it's very similar to the other function that we used, except this time, since we're only solving for a single point P, we only need to loop over the J panels, so we only have one for loop instead of a nested for loop. And so in here, again, we have the intermediate values from the derivation video, A, B, and now we have CX and DX, for the x direction term, cy and dy for the y direction term, and then down here we're computing mx, which is the first integral, the second integral, and we add those two terms together, then we're computing my, first integral, second integral, adding those two terms together. So now we have the mx and my integrals, and what we need to do is compute the x and y velocity, so that's what we're doing down here, and the thing that I'm checking here is to make sure that the grid points that we are solving for, the xp and the yp, are not inside of the polygon. So if they're inside the polygon, they should be equal to zero, so there's no point in uh, setting an x or a y velocity. So if it's inside of the polygon, I'm setting the x and the y velocity equal to zero. If it's outside of the polygon, which is the actual flow field, then we have, for the x velocity, we have the uniform flow plus that due to the geometric integral and then down here again for the y velocity again uniform flow plus that due to the geometric integral um, then we can compute the total velocity so that's why i call it vxy and that's just the uh, norm of the x and the y velocities and then the pressure coefficient at each grid point can be solved similarly to how we did it for the uh, pressure coefficient at the control points of the panels and the last section here is just the plotting section, and so you can see that it depends on whether you've set the flag or the, the appropriate flag equal to 0 or 1, and then you can read all the comments for how to plot stuff down here. And here you can see my Python code, and it's the same exact code pretty much as the MATLAB code. Uh, they're called the same thing, so they're easy to identify and correspond with the corresponding MATLAB code. And again, this is just the total code for the SP circle, and then this is the compute IJ SPM function, and this is the streamline SPN function, so they're very similar. So let's just run one of these circles. We're going to use nine boundary points, so eight panels at an angle of attack of zero, and if I press F5, it runs, and you can see some of the values pop up over here, and I'm only plotting the first two things just to go a little slowly here. So the first thing here is the panel geometry. You can see that our polygon is plotted in black and it's an octagon, and the circle it's approximating is in dashed black, and you can see here the panel normals, so these are the outward panel normals, showing us that we are oriented in the correct direction, we're going around the correct direction, which you can also see from the first panel, second panel, which means it's going around in the clockwise orientation. This figure over here shows the boundary points in black, the control points in red, and also shows the first panel, second panel, so we know that we're going around in the correct orientation. Let's now change the number of boundary points to something like five. That'll give us four panels, or a square. We can run that. And you can see that again, we have less points, but they are still on the analytical solution. And then we can also run something larger, let's just say 25 for instance. And then here you can see that we have all these points lining up again on the analytical solution. Now let's see what the streamlines look like. I've gone back to nine boundary points and I've uh, set the flag for the streamline plot to one, everything else to zero. And if I run this, then we get a streamline plot over the polygon. So the polygon's plotted in solid black. And the streamlines are coming in from left to right and you can see that they flow around the polygon and then back out the other side and in this particular case since the angle attack is zero they are symmetric going around uh, the circle and they'll actually be symmetric going around the circle for all cases because this is the source panel method um, the other thing you could see down here is the sum of the source panel strengths and you can see that's a very small number down to you know machine pre precision zero and then the lift and the drag are also down at that e to the negative 16 mark just as we would expect. Now the last plot we'll look at is the pressure coefficient contour plot, so I've put that in as an option. We're gonna run it again, and the two plots pop up here. So I still have the streamline plot showing you here, and then I have the pressure coefficient contours, and you can see that the red will give us higher pressures, and then as the colors become lighter, we get lower pressure, so you expect that you get high pressure here. This is the stagnation point on the front edge here. And then as it flows around, it speeds up, and you get lower pressures on the top. And then as it comes back down again on the aft side, it uh, slows down again, and you get higher pressures again. So this ends up being symmetric. 
I've just run this again for 50 boundary points instead of the nine that we've been doing just to show you that you get a better approximation of the circle. The streamlines look more curved and follow the contour of the circle. And then the pressure coefficient contours are a little bit more well-defined in terms of the higher pressure leading edge and trailing edge regions and then the lower pressure top and bottom. You can see that there's a little bit of some weirdness going on at the top here, and that's just because of the grid resolution that you set down in the streamline calculation. So if we go down to the streamline calculation section, you can increase the grid resolution here uh, to whatever you want, and that should help with uh, increasing the resolution because this is saying there's a grid point here, there's a grid point here, but there's not, you know, there's not a grid point somewhere in here. And so uh, if you increase the resolution, you'll get a little bit better resolution on these plots, but I think that this is okay. So while the solution of the non-lifting flow over a cylinder or a circle seems to be probably the most boring application of the source panel method that you can do. It's a good validation problem to see if your code works. If you can't get it to work for this simplest case, then you probably shouldn't move on to an airfoil just yet. In the next video, I'll be using pretty much the exact same code, but with one extra function included so that I can get the X-foil airfoil coordinates and the results to compare to. Uh, we will take a look at the results for the source panel method of an airfoil, and we'll see its limitations because it's hard to see the limitations uh, for the source panel method using just this cylind uh, cylinder or circle case. Uh, and then we will motivate the need for the vortex panel method. And then after that, I'll get into the derivations that we need for the vortex panel method and the codes for the vortex panel method. Thanks for watching.